Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, today is a very windy day. That's why I'm doing this video inside and not outside. Because I'd probably blow away outside. Those winds are very, very bad outside right now. So this morning I got up and I fed all the animals, checked on all the does, see if we had any new babies. We're still on baby watch for some of them. Uh, we went to the feed store and I got feed for the goats, a mineral block, a um, couple bales of hay, got a new bag of pine shavings so we could put new bedding in the chicken coop for the chickens. Um, uh, what else did we do today? Oh, got some dog food because the dogs were running low on their dog food. Yeah, but got that done. Then we came back, and my uh, cousin, uh, he helps here on the farm. His name's Nathan. You'll see him every once in a while. We put hay in the hay feeder, uh, filled up the feed bins. But anyway, I was saying we filled up the hay bins. Um... Tomorrow we'll get in there and we'll definitely clean out the chicken coop. Today it's just really windy and it's just not a good day to be out there. So hopefully tomorrow the wind won't be so bad and we'll be able to get out there and clean up the chicken coop. Finish cleaning out that one corner I showed you guys a video or so ago and get all that done. And then we've got to start working on a little chicken tractor because the baby chicks are starting to fly out of their brooder. So... Um, this weekend we're probably going to see what lumber we have around here that's usable and build them a little chicken tractor that way they can be inside the chicken coop but be able to move around a little bit more so that's the goal for this weekend but uh, not a whole lot going on today I do have a oncologist appointment next week on the 22nd so uh, if you guys pray or send good vibes or anything, we'd really appreciate those. Um, I have a tumor in my right ovary. And uh, I've been very sick the last few months. So um, we finally get in to see the oncologist next, next week and see what's going to happen with that. And hopefully they can just take the ovary out and not have to do treatments or nothing. But there's always a chance that they may have to. So, um, I'll try to keep videos up as much as I can. But, you know, depends on how I'm feeling that day. And if I'm even going to be up to even doing a video, to be honest. But, um, as you can see, I'm on the inside of our house. So, let me tell you a little bit about how Country Critter Homestead got started. Scott and I was living in Iowa. We were living in Waterloo, Iowa in 2019. And um, so when COVID had hit, I went to a sheer panic because there was no groceries hardly in the stores and everybody was running out of everything. Uh, restaurants were closing down. Stores were closing down. I mean, it was just crazy and I was going into a sheer panic. And I told Scott, as you know, so we got this land in Texas, you know, let's go home and farm our land. Let's become self self sufficient. So that's what we did. We moved back in June of 2020, and um, my I had moved back partially to help start, you know, to start the farm, but also to help my mother. Uh, she had just had back surgery, and my grandmother was. Uh, dying and she needed help with her so I had moved back to help my mom and to be there for my grandmother and three weeks after I got back home my grandmother ended up passing away <coughs> <coughs> sorry <coughs> but um Even though, we, even though we were going through a lot at that time, 
I still wanted to start this farm. Even more so. Because, um... My grandparents was true blue country people. They always had gardens when I was growing up. And I'm not talking about a little beady backyard garden. I'm talking about my grandfather would get the tractor out and plow a acre for a garden. So we always had fresh vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. And um, We always had chickens and eggs and stuff growing up. Every once in a while, would you know he'd bring home a calf, and we always had horses growing up, and you know it was just I was all about the country life growing up. I was in a city girl. I don't like living in a city. I have to be out in the country, or I'm just not happy. So after my grandmother had passed away, my grandfather had already been passed away for a couple of years. I was really more intent on starting this farm. And, um, so, in, I think it was like late June, early July, a friend hatched out some chickens for me, and those were 11 little chickens. Most of them ended up being roosters. Over half of them were roosters, actually. I didn't get very many hens, but I would get, um little baby chicks from other people too and then once my chickens I got old enough where they were laying eggs I would take those eggs and I would incubate them and start my own little flock and let me tell you that's addicting hatching eggs can get very addicting and then we ended up getting uh, three little goats uh, it was Billy Jacks, CC, and Cassie I still have Cece. I've since got rehomed Cassie and Billy Jack. And then um, that was in August. And then in October, I ended up getting three more goats. And these were little does. And I had named them Faith, Hope, and um, Grace. And I was sitting there one day, just like I am now, and I was watching these little goats. Like, what am I going to name these girls? I just kept watching them. And I kept looking around my farm. And it came to me, grace, because from the grace of God, I'm getting to start my dream. And live my dream of having my own farm. Hope. Because it's taken a whole lot of hope. To get it started and keep it going. And faith. Because I had to put all of my hopes and dreams. In the faith. That I could do this. And do it right. And keep it going. Even in the worst of times. Even when times are so hard that feed was just. Outrageous. And I didn't know how I was going to feed my goats some weeks. I always had that faith and that hope and that grace that we were going to make it through. And that's how I named those three goats. And I still have them out there. Grace just gave us twins about seven weeks ago. I'm still waiting on faith and hope to kid out. And um, since then, I've added to my little farm. I've got Charlotte. And Heidi and Tatum and um, there's Boots and Becca and Quake and Casey and there's Domino Moon. So since in the last two and a half years I've added to my farm I've had goats be born out here that I've sold and I've had chickens be hatched out here so I've got a pretty good little flock out there right now. And I've got nine in the brooder. So we've had calves out here. My husband used to work at a um, 
processing plant and when the cows would come in if they would drop their calves in the pens then the workers would have a choice of taking them home well out of seven we brought home only one survived and we had named her gypsy rose and we ended up selling her um the others were just too sick born with pneumonia or whatever and they they didn't even hardly make it past a week old but um our dream is to get another calf a bull calf and raise it up so we can put it in the freezer and then get a couple of feeder pigs so that way we can have our pork and just be as self-sufficient as we can be out here so country critter homestead not only became a dream it became a reality and my husband has been one of the biggest supporters when it has come to this farm. I mean, he buys my animals for me. If I tell him, you know, well, I want to add this animal to the farm, then, you know, he is, he'll say, okay, well, let's see if we can't find a breeder or find somebody who's selling, you know, whatever you're wanting. And he will get out here and he will help build pens and you know, I'll, and I'll tell them, well, I want this area cleaned up right here because I want to put these animals over here, or I have a plan for over here. And you know, and he helps do all of that. I mean, he is like one of my biggest supporters when it comes to this farm. And uh, I can't ask for a better partner to share this with. I mean, this last weekend, he got out there and he fixed the the fence panels where they were leaning up against the neighbor's fence. And he fixed those. He brought those back up and fixed those. He built the dog pen for the little dogs. Um, you know, he just does whatever needs to be done, you know, on his little days off that he has, which isn't much. I mean, he's an over-the-road truck driver. He's gone during the week. He usually gets in, like, Friday, maybe Saturday morning, and he'll, you know, try to do what he has to do before he's got to leave back out Monday. And uh, as far as the house, as you can see, we still got insulation. So what we did was we took two 12 by 32 sheds, portable sheds, and we turned them into a one bedroom, one bath house. And we, we've had these a little over a year, but times got hard. We were doing really good as far as getting them fixed up and everything. And then times hit hard and um, we weren't bringing as much money in, you know, from the trucking industry as we had. So um, we had to put the house on hold for a little bit. And we've almost lost these buildings a couple of times because we've got so far behind because of the economy. But we always managed to catch up. I put everything in God's hands. And I got so stressed out a few weeks ago. Because I thought we were going to lose these buildings. And I said, God, please. I said, I'm putting this all in your hands. I can't do the struggle alone. Scott, I can't do the struggle alone. God is what to do. At this time, Scott was an owner operator for Hirschbach Trucking. And we were losing our butts on everything. Checks went from, you know, like 1100 a week to 500 to 300 to zero. And we were losing our butts on everything. I had got a little part-time job at a daycare center, but I ended up getting a real bad lung infection and had to let that go because my immune system is shot. I couldn't work around the kids anymore. So I decided I'll just put all my energy into this farm. So... During all of this, I told Scott, I said, please go to this local company here in town and see if they're needing any drivers. He called them. They said, yes, we're needing a driver. We got a truck empty. Since he started with this company, it's been a little over a month. We're caught up on our buildings completely. Our car payment is caught up. Bills are caught up. The goat bin, the, the feed bins are full. And there's still money left over. All because 
I decided to put everything in God's hands and let him handle it from that day forward. What happens, happens. And we're thriving again. The farm is thriving again. And now it's time to start working on the house again. So our goal is to get sheetrock up on these walls. And um, get this ceiling done. As you can see, there's just no insulation up there. So it was very cold this winter. I mean, very, very cold. And that didn't help much when I had that lung infection. But we've, we've survived. And we've done it. But, uh, this is like the third time I've started this channel. And the f first two years, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, doing anything on here. Like, just me mainly feeding and stuff. So, I deleted all those videos. And I decided this year I'm starting fresh. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff out here. Um, and uh, this channel is going to be faith based on our faith you know our our baptist faith and if it grows it grows and if it just stays the same then that's what it's meant to be but i'm hoping it grows i want to show you guys how to farm on a budget when we started this farm we didn't have a whole lot of money and going forward with this farm we haven't had a whole lot of money and we try to use everything we can use as a resource out here like um hold on very scrappy like um the water totes i found these water totes online one day they were like ten dollars a piece if you buy five of them i think they were like forty dollars for all five he would actually throw one in for free so we took those and we made those into goat huts well I took three, made it to go huts, one into the doghouse for our German Shepherds, and then the other one, we just recently took it and turned it into the hay feeder and the compost bin. So, uh, we try to do everything on a budget out here as much as we can. And I want to teach you guys how to do that too. I want to teach you guys how to start your seedlings, how to um, build a chicken coop out of cattle panels my chicken coop i got out there cattle panels lattice and some lumber that's all it is it wasn't nothing fancy but it works it holds them in and our land boxes it's an old gas tank that my grandfather had an old plastic gas tank that he just cut some holes in that he had in his chicken coop you know that was that was his land boxes and when he passed away they were given to me to put in my hen house. And that's what my chickens lay in. So, um, we have an old bathtub out there. And I just put some pine shavings in that old bathtub this morning. Because i got a couple of hens that like to lay in there. I've got a little bitty tire that's in there. That I put some pine shavings in. Because I've got a little hen that likes laying in that. And it's just, we use what we have out here. And we don't waste anything if we can help it. What's that saying? Waste not, what not? Or what not, waste not? Something like that. But that's what we do out here. We try to use everything we can use out here. Um, I do a lot of crafting. But here recently, I haven't really crafted much because I really ain't had the energy to. I usually do craft shows, but last couple of months I've took off. Mainly because it's winter time and I don't want to get it's too sick um, because of the cold and stuff. So maybe April I'll start it back up. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But, um... That's pretty much it today. So I'll get you guys 
I hope you guys are having a really good Valentine's Day. My husband ended up getting me a new stove for Valentine's Day. And a digital game table that will be here tomorrow. And, um... It was supposed to be in here yesterday, but they didn't deliver it yesterday. So they'll deliver it tomorrow, they said. I'm really looking forward to that. We've been needing a new stove for so long. I bake a lot of bread. And... Um, I like to make our own breads and our own cinnamon rolls and stuff like that. So I was needing a new stove to work with. Our other one was just too old. But anyway, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you guys are having so much fun today. Hope you got... Um, I hope you get everything you want today and if you don't have someone to spend Valentine's Day with just remember we love you God loves you and we will talk to you guys later and if you haven't already like, subscribe, and leave us a comment bye y'all talk to you later critters